Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boots in the Field. The question of the week uh, that I'm going to work on is converting my side dress toolbar over to Y drop. Due to the positive response we showed uh, to the Y drop on V7, V8 corn in our meetings uh, this winter, as far as it outperforming the Coulter with the same amount of nitrogen pl- applied on the same day, has created a lot of conversation about guys um, swapping out their Coulters for Y drops on their side dress toolbars themselves to put it closer to the corn. First thing to keep in mind, the positive response that we showed you was partially due to the dry weather that we had. So the nitrogen placed in the stem water area with the Y drop was more usable at the right time as it could take advantage of a less water to get that done. This would be true as well if we had a field that was under nitrogen stress. So it was running out of nitrogen and we needed a quicker response the Y drop would get you a quicker response and bring that corn around. And we showed you that in Matt's field under his plot as well. That's where nitrates were low and we needed a quicker response before the corn got in trouble. The challenge though is clearance versus uh, time. As far as how many days can you side dress, how many days is it going to take to get your side dressing done? Because when the plants are small, a lot of you guys do start side dressing already at V3, V4. When the plants are real small like that, they can't take the uh, bruising and bumping that you're going to get from a wide drop hose. They're they're too small for that. Probably bigger yet is is splashing. So we got the hose kind of bouncing along in the ground, splashing 28 out into the whirl. We splash 28 in the whirl. We could do quite a bit of damage to that ear set on that plant. So that window between R3 and R6, it's kind of have to be careful um, with the corn plant at that stage as far as rubbing it with a hose and splashing product on it. To reduce that damage, of course, one thing you can do is make sure your wide drop toolbar matches up to your corn planter so you're not running a 16 on a 24, that type of thing. Probably the big thing, though, is slow the machine down. If you're used to running 10 to 12 mile an hour with your colder machine and V3 to V6 corn, you're probably looking at more like four and a half to five mile an hour with the Y drop. And of course, if you're doing some custom application work, that doubles your cost. You've got to make sure that you uh, put that into the puzzle as well. When that corn gets to V7, V8, it can handle being bumped around. You got a stiffer stalk in that situation and the whirl is high enough. We don't worry about splashing as far as you're less likely to get 28 splashed into the whirl. So the speed can go back up. Now you're back up to that 10, 12 mile an hour range and moving right along. So you may say, well, no problem. I'll start at V8 and I'll just drive faster. Well, remember by V11, definitely by V12, the corn is typically too tall for the tractor clearance. We can raise the bar, but we can't raise that tractor. So what we're saying is you got about 10, if you wait to V8, you got 10, maybe 12 days max to get your side dressing done instead of 20 to 25 days that you had when you started when it's smaller. Well, you say, no problem. I can side dress my corn in five days. That's true. You got 12 days to do it. You can do it in five days. But don't forget rain outs. A situation where you get rained out and you're held out for a week, then things can change. When we're out there pushing V11 with a tractor, uh, you're pushing corn over. And at V11, we're in rapid growth stage. So this corn is brittle and the uh, possibility of it snapping, especially early in the morning hours, are pretty high. We don't want to be snapping corn at V11 or we're going to have uh, basically nothing above the ear to work with uh, in that plant itself. So if we think about the time part in there as far as how am I going to get this done so things to remember uh, when you're converting a Y drop toolbar uh, or a Coulter toolbar to a Y drop is do you have enough front end nitrogen to get you to V8 now fall anhydrous isn't going to do this it's usually about V8 before your corn really gets into the fall anhydrous so we can't have that to bridge the gap your broadcast nitrogen, depending on the residue amount, can get tied up in the residue in the carbon penalty. So we have to be careful there that we have the rate high enough to make sure this corn uh, is going to be moving along all the way to V8. We don't want to side dress corn that's under stress. Probably the most efficient way to do that is adding some nitrogen with your row warmer or your spring strip till that's close uh, to the row 
or putting it on the corn planter. Probably the two more efficient ways to make sure this corn is rocking all the way to V8 and you, and you do the handoff then to your Y-drop application. Another question is, do you own the toolbar? So trying to hit a 12-day window with a rented toolbar can be risky. How many farmers does that toolbar have to cover? So having a toolbar in the shed is different than waiting for the one that your neighbor's using to show up. My recommendation is have a plan B. So what if you get rained out? You get 16 inches of rain or you get rained out like we did in 2015. What is the go-to plan? Is it high clearance? Is it bringing in an airplane? But have a plan B if you get knocked out of that window itself. And remember from V8 to tasseling in that rapid growth stage, we reach a point where this corn is sucking up 10 pounds of nitrogen per day. So in that, in that rapid growth stage, it's just such a pull on nitrogen. So it doesn't take us long to get in trouble. We want to make sure you're locked and loaded all the way through. Bottom line, don't let this corn have a bad day. Okay. So with that, I hope that helps. Keep her safe. Keep her moving.